before sunrise, the llamas are loaded with sacks of corn and start their difficult journey through the jungle, up to the Kairos homes, some 8,000 feet above. Each llama will carry a load of 50 pounds, no more. They cross river torrents on bridges constructed of logs lashed together. During the rainy season, the low bridges are washed away by the swollen rivers, and crews of Kairos men must reconstruct the path each year. In preparation for this heroic effort of bringing the corn harvest home, Only the high bridges are not affected by the destruction of the rainy season. These tenuous log structures can't be used by the animals, but are crossed only by the Kairos men on their way to plant the corn. The lead llamas are decorated with bells and colorful tassels. Without the llamas, the corn could not be transported. Along with the corn, other jungle products such as melons, fruits, and peppers are hauled up as well. Since no trees grow in the high altitudes, all wood for house construction, tools, and weaving utensils also must come from the jungle. The Kairos refer to the jungle as an unreasonable, irrational sanctum of endless trees, and they don't like it. The journey up the high mountain valleys is done in several stages. In the climb up from 6,000 to 14,000 feet, they pass through several zones of altitude, which seem like different seasons in the shift from tropical to tundra. After a 12-hour climb, unloading the llamas at Hatun Kairos offers a chance to rest before the final ascent to the mountain homes. The corn is put out to dry, and the best ears are set aside as seeds for next year's planting. Some of the corn is placed under the ichu grass, beneath the blankets of the Kairos beds. The corn is watered regularly for seven days. 
and as the Cairo sleep on their beds, their body warmth gives the necessary heat to sprout the corn kernel. When the corn is sprouted, it is ground up between stones and placed in containers to ferment to become the alcoholic chicha, corn beer, used in the Ahata Uhu Chichi ceremony. The focus of the ceremony is the lamas who carried the corn. The Kairos make offerings of burnt coca leaves to the Aukis, the spirits who live in the high mountain peaks, asking their protection for the health, strength, and fertility of the animals. The Kairos drink the chicha and chew coca leaves all day. Dancing, singing, and drinking the chicha, the ritual becomes their reintegration with the forces of nature, and the spiritual reality of their lives is revealed. The lamas also drink the corn beer and are decorated. Inside the house with chicha and coca leaves, the ceremony continues on through the night.
just over the mountain is the village of Pirki. The Indians there don't have access to the jungle land, so they often must trade for corn with the Kairos. They also have direct connection with the new agricultural cooperatives run by government engineers. This is the Indians' first step toward dependency on a cash economy. There is more communication with present-day Peru. Twenty miles away over the mountains, the rural market at Okangati is where the Kairos shop for things which they neither grow or make themselves. At the market there are more people than in all of Kairos. Indians from the many local hacienda cooperatives and communities come to trade and buy. Mestizo merchants deal and sell. The Kairos rarely venture into this unfamiliar world. Aniline dyes for bright colors and weaving can only be obtained at the market. The marketplace is the source of coca leaves. The gentle, stimulating effect of coca is an integral part of work and ceremonial life. Access to the market means access to the road, to trucks, and to the city of Cusco, seven hours away. Before Pizarro and the Spanish conquest, Cusco was the center of the Inca Empire. In those days, no one approached Cusco without a burden on their back, and even the Inca nobles had to carry a symbolic burden. Spaniards built their cities over old Inca walls. In the time of the Incas, no gold, silver, or fine cloth could be taken out of Cusco once it had been brought in. Pizarro seized a great fortune in gold and silver when he conquered the city. This concentration of wealth was transported to Spain and eventually furnished the basis for European capitalism. In 
the time of the Incas, there were no poor people living in Cusco. Today, there are few prospects for Indians in the city. For them, the only way to earn money is by carrying bundles. The bundles they carry are not their own, but are the property of mestizo merchants. The burden of Peru is carried on the backs of Indians. The progression of Andean life has moved down from the mountains, away from the individual qualities of the isolated communities. With the conquest, Pizarro took over a well-organized society. The Spaniards stole the riches and dignity of the Inca Empire and started in Peru an inevitable movement toward European values. The colonial hacienda system disenfranchised the people from the land. And only in the past decade has the government instituted some measures of land reform to relieve past injustice. The path of their history leads to an inevitable condition for the Indians today. That of minimal survival, yet maintaining the seed of their cultural heritage. Within their country, they have become a separate culture. Neither including nor excluding them from Peruvian life has relieved their suffering. themselves. 